Inc. I'm known uh, around this country for training people on firearms, personal protection systems, executive protection, things like that. Um, next slide, please. Mm -hmm. All right, and what I like to do is I like to have a program that was really set forth for women um, when I bring it into those doors for the first time. Before we even touch any firearms, before we do any application work, we always talk about something called cognition. Mindset achieves confidence through knowledge. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. That is the acronym. And what we're looking at is before we begin, we touch any firearms or anything like that, we have to know the game that we're playing. Also often in life, people sit at the table, they want to play the game, they see the guns, they want to have a great time, they want to own them, but they don't know the game. They don't know the rules of the game to be successful, right? So the first thing you want to do, if there's an encounter that you run into, before any guns are involved, be the first to file a police report. Always. It is up to the person um, that is filing uh, the claim against the person to prove that the claim is actually a false claim. So you go out there, something happens to you, and you file your police report or whatever, right? It's going to be up to that other party to come in and be like, okay, this didn't happen, this didn't happen, or whatever the case may be. The first person to file is usually the winner. Okay, this is just giving you the real deal here. Do not engage in the behavior of malicious filing. What I mean by malicious filing, what I'm saying is, you just taking out charges on your baby mama because she didn't decide she wanted to have sex with you. Or, you know, you wanted to file charges on your baby daddy because, you know, you found him with another woman on the side. Next slide. If you are a victim of a crime and you do not file a police report, it's just like it never happened. You see it time and time again. People try to go to these courtrooms. They try to say to tell to the judge, hey, this person did this, this person did that. And the judge like, well, do you have proof upon claim? You can't show proof, then it never happened. Hearsay is inadmissible in court. Gather your evidence. When gathering your evidence, you must be able to articulate all three elements of a crime. Now, all three elements of the crime are motive, means, and opportunity. If you are missing any one of those three things, you do not have a crime. There's no crime that's taking place. You must be able to prove everything you say in the court of law. Next slide. Okay, so we're going to start talking about mindset, threat assessment, countermeasures, indirect action. Accept and recognize that a criminal has no face or physical description. Technically, by the book, everyone in this room is a criminal of some sort. You literally cannot go from point A to point B without breaking some kind of rule of law. You cannot and will not ever fully know what people are thinking. My father been married to my mother, my second mother, for 37 years. Before she died, he said, listen, man, I've been with this woman for 37 years, and I still don't know what this woman is all about. I'm learning about her every single day. Do not ever think that you can change people. Take people for who they are as they come to you. Be aware of potential threats in your environment. Plan ahead to maximize your safety and minimize the risk of uh, having a violent encounter. Avoid people who may constitute a threat or may get you into trouble. We all have our friends and even family members that we like to hang out with, and they may be the coolest people on the face of the earth. You may love them to death, but this person has a big attitude problem. This person may rub people the wrong way, may turn people off, may agitate people. People want to fight. And if it's your family member, you want to defend them because that's your family. But your family will oftentimes bring you down with them, right? Next slide. Recognize the indicators, red flag. What I'm telling you to do is profile people. There's nothing wrong with profiling. People will look at it and say, oh, you're passing a judgment. You're saying this, you're saying that. No, what you're trying to do is make a judgment call. Remember, everyone that you come in contact with has a potential impact on your life. Mindset, attitudes, beliefs, values, demeanor, ethics, hard-looking tattoos, gang paraphernalia, current and previous criminal behavior. What are the triggers? Is it someone that when they hear a certain word, it just triggers them? They can't control themselves or their behavior. Uh, gaining joy and inflicting pain onto the helpless people. Sometimes um, one of the biggest red flags, even the FBI, are people who abuse animals. That is something for you to also look at. Uh, friends and their associates, who do, who do they hang around with? Are they like, even though this person may be a good person, do they hang around the people who are the drug addicts, the drug dealers, the criminals, and the thieves, and the rapists, or whatever, and self-esteem? A lot of times, a lot of people who turn to criminal behavior oftentimes have low self-esteem. It's not that they don't have a high value of self-worth, but they sometimes they give in to peer pressure. Next slide. Oh, okay, also here. 
We are learning de-escalation methods and techniques. This is very important. You even see it today. Back in the day, when the police line for you to come in, kick the door in, everybody get on the floor, we're gonna make it do what they do. But now with the advent of these social media, the cameras, we're picking up all of that. And people are wondering, they're saying, hey, this whole situation of how we're dealing with convicts, criminals, potential people operating in the criminal space is not working. What can we do? Well, here, even for you as a civilian, learn the de-escalation methods and techniques. It'll save you. If you are a concealed carry person or something like that, if you are able to talk your way out of a situation, talk someone down from doing something, it is great for you. If you don't have to press that trigger, you don't have to worry about looking at lawsuits, attorneys, jail time, prison time, whatever. Next slide. This is pretty big here. We're going to take it from Colonel Cooper's um, color codes of awareness, but I have to add something here. The unaware, the aware, alert, alarm, freeze, death, serious bodily injury, rape, and robbery. Most people operate here. Walking down the street, you hear it all the time. Walking down the street, texting on the phone, almost get hit by a car, right? It happens every single day. But what we want to typically be is right here in the aware stage, right? We want to know who's in the environment, but we don't want to be paranoid, right? When we start to become alert, we look at something or someone in the environment and say, hey, that's a hazard. Hey, that's a danger. Now we have our attention focused here, right? And now we go into the freeze. I mean, I'm sorry, alarm. Now this person or this hazard looks like it's getting ready to do something. This person looks like they're getting ready to rob you. They look like they're getting ready to rape you, break into your home, your house, your car. What do you do at this point? It's fight or fight. If you're going to fight, fight. If you're going to run, run. But whatever you do, you don't want to get here. When you get to the black stage here, that's when you are in permanent trouble. And I'm not just talking about on a physical level. What I'm talking about here is on a cognitive level. Once you become engaged in an incident and you actually seriously get hurt, guns get shoved in your face, get shot, stabbed, it stays with you for the rest of your life. And it alters your relationship with people. Next slide. Let me know we're going to get out of time here. I don't want to go past this one. So a lot of times people look at the physiological body response under stress. A lot of times we look at these fights, we look at these gunfights, look at the shootings, the stabbings, whatever's going on, and we want to know why do people freeze up? What, what's going on here? 115 beats loss of fine motor skills, right? Use of small muscle groups, they start diminishing. Loss of, com uh, loss of complex motor skills as well, right? But what we want to look at here is the 145. Big, gross caveman, that's what we're looking at here, right? When you're out there, out and about in those fights and everything like that. 175, auditory exclusion, loss of near vision, loss of cognitive reasoning. People just do whatever, chaotic. We don't want to be there, right? So that's why we train so much. Whether you're training with firearms, knives, or you are a flight attendant having to deal with crowds of people in the public uh, space. Next slide. Let me know when we're good to go. I'll wrap it up here? Um. Okay, cool. So are you capable of using physical force? You hear people talk about it all the time. Man, I wish somebody would break in my house. I wish somebody would. That's what they say all the time, right? And then that situation happens, unfortunately. Right? And so we look at these barriers. The firearm is always a tool of last resort. Even a knife is a tool of last resort. In fact, the knife is the worst thing done. But look at the moral standards. Some people may have mental or moral standards that stop them from engaging in self-defense practices. Maybe their religion may come into play. Maybe there could be some lack of mental preparation that stops them from actually stopping someone from hurting them. So these are just some of the things that um, I always encourage people to pay a little bit of respect to before they start going out purchasing firearms, doing all of these tactical classes and everything like that. So I hope that um, during a little bit of time that we had together, you actually learned a little bit of something, you're retaining it. If there's any questions, uh, you can reach me at uh, vodaconsulting.com, uh, catch me on YouTube or whatever the case may be here on Facebook under Lucian R. Black. You guys be safe out there. Appreciate you. All right.